Yeah. All right, it. Kongman. Uh, obviously, the racism is so bad that a bunch of rich, uh, you know, BIPOC, some pox, and I don't know, black people, <laughs> whatever they're identifying as, can get together and make a major picture for a major network and talk about how they're victims. I I don't know what your thoughts are on this. Well, the only institutionalized and systemic racism today is against Asians and white people. Um, the fact I remember when I was applying to college, I was like, I didn't get into. I applied to 20 colleges. I only got into three. But then I saw this one black kid. He got into all eight Ivy Leagues. I was like, wow, he must be super great. I had a higher SAT score than him, ACT score than him, GPA, and more extracurriculars. And I didn't get into any of them. And then so I looked at that and I was very demoralized. And I knew in that moment, you know, even back in high school, that something was deeply off about the American system. And the only institutionalized or st systemic racism is really against white people like this, where they're attacking white people explicitly and against Asians. And it's so frustrating to me when I see this because, you know, in the beginning, she's like, oh, we need to talk about how white people are killing, uh, killing us. It's like, no, white people aren't killing you. Look at the crime statistics. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's what it is. Um, what is it like? 13% of the population account for 55% of all homicides in this country. And then if you really break it down, it's 6% because it's mostly male. And if you really break that down, it's like a young population of that. So it's like, what, 3% of people committing 50 to 55% of all homicides in this country. It's not white people doing that. I'm sorry. And the, we have to be honest while also being discreet, but like honest about the conversation around race. And honestly, it's really, really tiring for me to see them deflect and completely gaslight us. Because again, it's not, I am not scared of white people. When I go, the safest place I've been in this country is the boonies of Wisconsin, the boonies of Ohio, the boonies of Alaska. White, rural, con Christian conservatives have been the most kind and the most caring for me. The places I felt the most in danger was actually in inner cities. It's not only anecdotal, this is supported by all crime statistics and data, and the fact that they keep pushing this is really stupid and annoying, and this is what the left does really well, right? I talked about this before, where they use narratives and stories to, to win over the culture. And this, just by watching this trailer, if you didn't know anything about politics, you didn't know anything about culture and history, you would assume that they are right, because it sounds very good and it's very fluffy, but in fact, it's complete BS and we need to take back the culture. And for us to do so, we have to write our own narratives and tell our own stories. So maybe you're smiling. Yeah. Wayne? When is he not smiling? No, oh, he's, happy, good. he's got That's his little true. smirk and I want to I know what's, <laughs> what's rolling around in your head. Because I mean, like, that, I, I think that you make a lot of really good points there. So. Thank you. Um, so that trailer was everything I despise <laughs> about America as well as... Some of the stuff I love about America, all in that very short clip. So I think the worst thing, in, one of the worst parts of the USA is the obsession with race. Mm -hmm. I say this as a Brit, right? Um, and as someone who's traveled to a lot of countries, the USA, and Americans don't like it when I say this, especially like conservative Americans, but like this country, people are really hung up about the racial thing. And this runs in, this runs in all directions, right? It's such a bigger conversation than it is in... Uh, most uh, just almost almost anywhere else right it's just i don't know it's a, it's a weird the thing i like about it <laughs> is i love the fact that in this country number one people are passionate about stuff i do love the it's fact true. like like americans are very extra i tweeted this today so <laughs> you could pick any topic that exists in the world and you will find tons of americans who are passionate about it it could be the most random obscure thing and I like that. I do like the fact that there's this like fire and conversation and debate, and people talk about everything as exhausting as it can be. I also like the fact that this country is so prosperous and there's so much opportunity and so much success and money out there that you can literally make a career. You can become a multimillionaire off of like talking about communism or like promoting this bull crap yeah. and talking about how you're victimized or whatever. You can, you can be worth $50 million and you're still a victim and you can still get away with this stuff. So this country is just crazy. I watch that and I'm just like, man, like this could only come out of the USA. Like this couldn't come out the UK. <laughs> no. I don't think this could come out of Australia. No way. Like, it came out of someone's <laughs> ass, actually. Yeah, like, seriously. Just like, <laughs> someone just poops it on so, so I simultaneously hate it and I'm also like, man, this is kind of... This is kind of special that this is even possible. Like, They've really got some goal though, don't they? To put to like to put that together and go, 
this. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is going on the television. This now. is going to help. The mm, first, the first this line is going to push the narrative. The first line's like, "Here's the problem I have with white people." No, it starts before that, Elijah, where it said, "This will trigger white people." Yeah. No yeah. shit. You fucking dickbags! You're saying that all of us are shitheads. Are you for real? I'm not triggered by it, but I love that one TikTok. I think we talked about that recently, where the guy, the guy was like, "All right, everybody, tell me one thing that you hate about blacks." And then the, the girl goes, "The girl goes, oh wait, I'll go first. They're just all inconsistent." And then this black girl's like, "What?" And then she starts, and she goes over to her fireplace, and she's like, "Look, I painted my black fireplace the same black as I painted this pot, as I painted the brick, and they all look like different colors, inconsistent. No matter what you do with blacks, they're always inconsistent." And it was like, you can just make a joke, and already, like, I know it's been taken down on a few pages for being insensitive. And it's like, who's really getting triggered? You're just like, let's trigger the whites. If whites are really getting triggered, you couldn't put that shit out. If yeah. it was really going to cause problems, the reason why you can put that out is because what you say about white people isn't true. If you really thought white people were killing you, and there was problems and there was gonna be reper like repercussions for coming against the white systemic power, you wouldn't produce shit like that. You no, wouldn't. You couldn't. You, that's what I'm saying. The, what, what, where the real triggering is, is try saying the N-word in the middle of a city. Mm. Try putting out a video called, I made this to trigger the blacks. Like, that's who's really getting triggered. Play that video you, again and I just might say it. Well, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like it's just so funny. It's, it's so funny because, yeah. like, it's everything they do, it's the opposite. It's literally the opposite. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here. And let's go.